lie to everybody. You can fool some of the people some of the time, most of the people all the time, but not all of the people all the time. And at some point, you're going to wake up and say, we're not in Kansas anymore, total, and you want it fixed. Right, but practice, That's why we're all senior citizens here. In practice, <laughs> we still bound. <laughs> So we're still bound. In practice, we're still bound. We can't just go to a court and saying, well, here's what I want in quantum language, and they say, no, this is our constitution we follow. We don't recognize your, your new version of, uh, of a ah, constitution. Ah, but they do. Some of the court judges are brought up to speed. They agree with the quantum language. And because you are in a closed area called a courtroom on a closed contract in both the parties suing, both the claimant and the vassalee, and the judge are all on the same page of quantum, we will have a quantum trial, and the rules and regulations of the quantum contract will be upheld. It's when you have a discrepancy between a licensed adverb, a person that's an adverb verb, with a judge who's an adverb verb, and an individual who has quantum language where you have a conflict of fact in fiction, and fact and fiction can never meet. Okay. So but, a lie is still a lie under the rules of perjury, and we have signed confession that it committed perjury. So now they have to do one of two things. They either have to adapt truth or vacate their fiction. So the only reason it becomes binding is because you're dealing with the difference between a, a truth and a lie, and the truth eventually wins out. Exactly, and because, because I paid a fee to file a document, and he signed it. I have a contract, commercial contract. And that stamp on here makes it a commercial contract, even though they may say the money is fiction, this stamp is a gold certificate under law of the flag, and this contract is binding between two people because we have a whole value of gold. And therefore, when you explain the facts and you know what the facts are, then the judge has to agree with that. But you also have to get the judge off his plane, and you do that by contract and saying there are no planes in this court, and put that one little sentence in there. We are, there are no boxes, there are no plane, and law of the flag has jurisdiction here today. And the law of the all illusion, law of the flag. Law of the flag, okay. Law of the flag says, if you don't wish to make contract, do not come under my flag. And you mm. read about flags of all different countries. Look at the, United, look at the, the, the Olympics that are taking place right now in Vancouver. Every nation that's participated, what's the first thing they walked in with? They had a flag up. They were all under their flag. And when they win, they get their gold medal, they put up their flag. It's always the flag of the country comes first before the people in the awards. So the judge and the other party can refuse to accept the flag. That means what happens with a court case? Or the oh, no. Well, that flag's got jurisdiction. And that flag is defined in the court, on the paper. And when he holds that document, that is the court. It isn't the room. It's the piece of paper. That's the vessel that flies the flag. He's bound by this flag. And if he's holding up, he goes, oh, you mean this contract? He's holding the flag up. And you can capture him by saying, you've just traversed with my flag. You're under law of the flag. Your seal <laughs> is a cartoon character and has no jurisdiction because there's no flags here. If you, if you do it right, you know about the stamp and the flag and the endorsement and the terminology of syntax, you will prevail in your court because they can't make it go away. It's physical evidence. Doesn't matter if the guy wants to play games and say, well, go away. I'm going to dismiss this. He can't D-I-S, demon god of the underworld for mischief against quantum. You can't vacate quantum unless you do it in quantum. So if a guy, judge hands you an adverb verb order, it's no contract. Syntax it, attach it to another complaint and file it back in the court and sue him for fraud. He now becomes a defendant against himself. You make it sound so simple. It is simple. I do it all the time. I've been doing it for 30 years. Okay, guys. That's well, 525. Tomorrow we're going to put some uh, the Australian 1953 uh, law that made the origin flag legal, or as it was called, an act by Elizabeth. We're going to write that up here. I'm going to syntax it for you, and then I'm going to write you the correct version of it. Uh, well, also, anybody else got any, any sentence structure that you want me to dissect? We'll work on dissecting that, because every sentence that we put up here is going to become a seminar in itself, where the words came from, why the words have to be changed. 
the cause and, you know, and effect of why these things have to be broken apart and then put back together to make sense. And I can do that. When we did the seminars over in Auckland, we spent two days, 16 hours, dissecting sentences. And at the end of 16 hours, about half the people got a little bit of it. It's not as easy as you think. I can do it, and you can see it happen. And you can understand it as I do it. But then I give it to you, and I say, do it. You're going to go, what's an adverb? What's an adjective? How do I identify these things? Well, this is where it comes to repetition. That's why I say it takes 200 hours to shift your gears and become proficient like Stephen is. And once you get this, once you get this, you can't be lied to by anybody. You are empowered. You can walk into court with your head hell high and knock them all down. I guarantee you, you'll feel really good. Not only that, you're going to have everybody that's got a agreements or a lawsuit hire you at 100 bucks an hour to help them with their lawsuits. Make a hell of a good living. All right, 200. I'm financially independent. <laughs> so, David, what you're saying is it's not about arguing fiction with fiction, which is what probably a lot of people in the room have been doing. It's to go to court and say, let's, let's talk it, let's talk it through. And if they're not prepared to, then you notice them and you, you're going to sue them. The, the only thing all of you can ever talk about when you go into court is what just happened. The here and now. What, what just happened? Huh? You can't tell me what I did. What just happened? We witnessed something. Right, you're all witnesses. You can only talk about you. You have been damaged or you have been rewarded. You have witnessed something taking place. What did you witness? You witnessed the modification of language to extort, I mean, to create perjury. If you witness and can prove perjury through modification of language, the case has to be vacated. Who brought the case? The DA, the judge, the police officer? If they lied, they lost jurisdiction because it's a criminal act. The case is mute. They have to be held to a high standard. You sound like a marriage counselor teaching us how to use eye messages. It's all about talking about yourself. You can only. The only proof you have about anything that's ever happened in your life is what's in your personal brain. You can't talk about anything you see, only about who you know, who you are, and what you know. Anything and when you get to learn, when you learn that one sentence, how to identify the damage that you are a party to, or a victim of, the damage you're a victim of, because of modification of language, you will prevail in stopping fiction from damaging you. Have fun tonight, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as far as any questions go, you don't, that you remember later, send me an email, and I'll answer them, write them up. They answer emails all the time. Uh, as this process goes on, you do more study, come a bit, you have more awareness. Uh, you can contact me as long, you know, as long as you want to stay in the program, you can contact me. There's no cost at it, so. Uh, I wrote up here in Act, 19, 1953. This is when the original flag was uh, Queen Elizabeth had uh, recognized the original flag. And this is what she wrote to go ahead and give it its approval. Now, as you know, and is an article and for and act. A-N always appears in front of a word stress with a vowel. But because they left out with an act or for an act or by an act, they didn't use the prepositional phrase. So this now becomes an adverb, not an article, in front of a word that means no contract because it's a vowel and two consonant. So then she goes ahead and says to declare. Now, DE means no and Claire is speak. And, not, and it's also a future tense adverb, which now takes declare to be a future tense no speak. So she said nothing. A certain flag now becomes undefined as to what flag she's referring to, making it an adjective pronoun, calling the flag a no, no, no. Two is an adverb in future time, modifying the be condition of now time. 
but now it's used as a verb, which is an illusion. Then the is an adverb, making Australia to be a, a, a coloring national flag. So therefore, it's another adjective, adjective pronoun. To make, again, in the future, which has no now time jurisdiction, which means you shall never make, now is a verb instead of a, a uh, condition of state. Other is a vowel in two consonants, a no contract word. Adverb, now to make provision, PRO means no, VIS is site and ION is contract. You cannot see the flag. And it's also used as the coloring of the pronoun flag. And then with respect, re meaning no, inspector comes from phantom. So if you have no phantom condition, in future time, to flags as a dangling participle verb. You can't end a sentence in a verb. She's ending it as a dangling participle verb and then signs it. Is there any nouns on the page, or any facts on the page? Well, the answer is no. There's no prepositional phrases. There's no condition of lodio ownership. And she's given no now time jurisdiction to anything. So every word has been a condition of future or negative. So there is absolutely no condition or certification for a now time originally flag. And yet, since 1953, for the past 50 years, they have re, uh, pretended to treat the flag as being a national Australian flag. But this is the type of information. Does Queen Elizabeth have jurisdiction here? Well, she claims to be her postmaster. But has the Postal Treaty ever been written with the correct sentence structure, communication syntax? The answer is no. So therefore, Queen Elizabeth, as postmaster, has no treaty whatsoever trust or contract with the entire country of Australia. She also has no standing in this country because she's not an origine. So therefore, she's an illusion that has come here pretending to be something that isn't because there's no contract. And furthermore, you've got, uh, when you do the violation on language to fool the people, you've lied as, a public, as pretending to be a public figure and then telling lies to the people, this is perjury, which is a criminal act in every language. Excuse me? Isn't it also considered treason to, to, to knowingly lie to the people? No, treason is an act that's called constructive treason, which means contract treason. Now, contract treason is when you sign a contract to perform a specific duty. A <laughs> microphone. Uh, contract treason is when you sign a specific contract to perform a specific duty. Actual treason takes place during time of war. You have to be under a declaration of war to con commit treason, and that carries a death sentence in all countries worldwide. The, uh, the constructive treason portion, if you join the military, but it's peacetime and you do something wrong, you probably wind up in jail for 20 years. Right. My understanding of declaration of war is setting yourself up um, as an authority and governing the people unknowingly uh, doing uh, and carrying out such acts as to purposely um, hurt the people by removing their rights, um, well, various rights that they um, have, like human rights. Okay. When you use the word declaration, you're saying no spoken contract. And the throughout the history of mankind, war has always been an issue of trespass and mind control. If I don't control your mind, I put a bullet or an arrow in it. And that's basically the fundamental. Anything that is acquired through war is called alien, A-I-L-I-N-G, which means corruption from the beginning. Mm -hmm. A conquering country, like when, say, uh, Germany invaded Poland. After the war was over, Russia invaded Poland. And after Russia left in 1989, all the land that was taken in both the World War II by the Germans and then seized under communist control from the Russians was all given back to the original title, lodial title owners of 1938. So it is not just about the land, it's also about mind control or controlling the free will of other people. That's correct. Well, in that case, then most of the laws which have in some way um, taken away or reduced or made the citizens of Australia believe that they have no rights or their certain rights have been reduced 
and that uh, those rights are given by the government rather than that they... They're making have... everything to be a privilege. Right. That's a declaration of war in that case. No, that's just misinformation. If that misinformation has been carefully designed for the purpose of uh, making the people believe that they, those rights, they don't have those rights, then... The minute they believe that they don't have something, they turn to voluntary compliance through fear of guns and clubs, better known as rape. Right. Rape is the performance of one human being over another without their permission or against their will. And if, if this was designed to be executed in such a way, and it's, it's uh, pre-thought. Yes, and so what they do is they give you all kinds of toys, uh, benefits, have you sign contracts, driver's licenses, social security, uh, make all kinds of promises to you, but in, inadvertently you become a good slave and 88 cents on a dollar that you earn goes to the government. So forcefully enforcing a law that is not a law is not a dec upon people, well, as unsuspecting you, people, it's not a declaration of war. As we've, as we've proven here, there is no treaty, trust, or contract written with the correct sentence structure here or any other country worldwide. And it hasn't been for 8,500 years. Right. But to rewrite mankind's history, you have to, uh, that's why I established a, a constitution in quantum language. We take the same volition of what was intended or the, how the people believe it should be. We took away the future tense, we took away the past tense, we took away the negative words, we replaced everything with now time, prepositional phrases to articulate an order of operations that puts every single fact in its correct position of having an individual, having knowledge, declaring that knowledge through the verb of thinking, making a claim for that knowledge, contracting with that knowledge in the correct sentence structure communication syntax, and then authorizing it through their authors, their auth authentic condition, their authentic volition, so that we have a performance that the person knows that what they're doing when they do it. It's not an accident. When you go into court, one of the things that the judges have to go through, can you read and write? How far did you go in school? Uh, do you have a driver's license, which means you can operate an automobile? Do you know how to run a, a computer? Do you understand the words they've been smoking, spoken to you? Have they offered you or intimidated you to perform a specific way or say a specific thing uh, when you pleaded guilty for the crimes you were charged with and to come to an arbitrated settlement? And he had the, the individual who's sitting there will go, no, 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 you know, I, I participated, I'm doing this under my own volition, I've given up my constitutional rights, which means the right to contract with somebody else to go ahead and, and you're throwing yourself on the mercy of the court. I've seen some people get good deals. I've seen other people wind up with life in prison when they thought they were going to get parole. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking so at much earlier punch. than that. When, when a, a group of people knowingly set themselves up in an unconstitutional manner for the purpose of enslaving the people and pretending they, are, uh, they have a right to govern, but the intention from the beginning was done not to govern, but to control. Isn't that a That's do the not court they, system. Isn't that, do not, are they not a foreign power? Of course, all courthouses worldwide are foreign vessels and dry dock. When you go into a courthouse, you are no longer in Australia. You have left it, you might as well be on Mars. So if a foreign power declares itself to be the chosen of the people, declares themselves to be a government, and they set out to enslave the government, is not to enslave the people which they pretend or they swear to, to protect, is that not a declaration upon the people that they sworn to protect? Like you said, the word declaration, it's, they haven't said anything. It's just the illusion that you believe exists. But when you syntax it, like we syntax this, it doesn't exist. It's not even here and now time. It's an illusion. But you've been brainwashed to, to try and use all of these things in now time. But it isn't in now time. Syntax is a, is a word, and the operations of using syntax have been banned from all schools, universities, dictionaries, everything, so people don't know where to look. If you don't, this is the only program taught 
globally in all countries on syntax and all the secrets of government, the laws, order of operations, and it's mathematically certified. Same as a math problem. And that's the unique thing. People have tried to do what I've done, but they didn't have a math interface to prove it frontwards and backwards to justify why do I need a prepositional phrase or a positional lodial fact. And this is, this is where this technology was accepted by all governments and allowing me to teach it worldwide because the government can't rule the people with a lie because everyone knows it's a lie now. So they, they know it's got to get fixed and they don't have anybody qualified to teach it. So they're allowing me to make the videotapes, the books, and teach this globally and be the, the spokesperson for this technology because I own the copyrights on it. What is a declaration? Declaration means no spoken contract. D is no, Claire is speak, and ION is contract. Okay, so if a law or a proposed law is Propose, P-R-O means no, pose, take some position. A position means to have a fact or location. You have no location law. What you need is a contract, the correct sentence structure, communication syntax contract. It's that simple. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Mutiny, mutiny, mutiny. <laughs> oh, thank you. The, uh, the questions that he is asking are legitimate. I mean, he's, he's done a good job of standing up here and, and challenging me. Now, in, um, when I did San Diego, we had a man stand up and do about 69 questions. The rest of the people in the audience got irritated with it. And I told everyone in the audience, I says, this guy works for me. He's supposed to ask these questions. He's not dominating the, the thing. What he was was the clerk of the court for a federal judge for eight years. And what he did is he, made his, he was paid by the courts to go around to all the different people that would put seminars on against the Internal Revenue Service, against government, and embarrass them and disqualify their program every time, no matter where they showed up in Los Angeles or San Diego. And you've got a population of 38 million people in Southern California. So he had a full-time job every weekend of going out there and just taking these guys apart. Well, when he ran into me, I took him apart. And even though he was, he asked really good questions, he didn't know anything about quantum language. So he was working from a fiction point of view. And I took his perspective and completely changed it. And he went after his own judge that hired him to go after me. And he came to 13 seminars consecutively. And he would get up and he would say, he would challenge me the same way a judge would challenge you in court. So what he is doing, the questions he's asking, are doing you a service because if he didn't, ask, if you didn't know or didn't prepare yourself for the level of these questions to be answered, and you want to go up in front and sue a federal judge or a state judge or a magistrate, I said you're going to be, you're going to put yourself in harm's way. Don't do something half-baked because you will have a nice stay in orange pajamas and three hots and a cot, and you don't want to go there. So anybody thinks they can, they're can they ready to go to court, call me up. Try and run your scenarios past me. And if you can get, get past me, because I'm the guy that prosecutes judges, and I know all those secrets, if you can get past me, then I'll say, you're ready to go to court. I'll even fly down there and back you up on the thing, if you're that good. So. It, it's, uh, it's not a free cakewalk out here. That's why nobody goes into court and does this thing. And you guys got adrenaline. I don't have adrenaline. My adrenal glands were removed when I was 25 years old. I don't have a fear factor. So I, the, the flight, uh, fright to flight, I don't have that. I, my hobby is mountain climbing, hanging off a thousand foot cliff. You know, that's just so much uh, fun. <laughs> Any questions about this? Go ahead and ask me questions while I'm getting the next thing written up here. Got a question there before you run too much there off. Okay. Uh, what I don't get about this is how you designate a, 
a part of speech to its word when it's used in a different way. Oh, that's easy. Mm. The, uh, the words, an adverb modifies a verb. An adverb can connect the, ver the, can connect the verb and can connect to a pronoun in front of it. But it modifies an adjective and it modifies a verb. And that's it, or another adverb. So the mathematical operations of syntax has to go frontwards and backwards evenly. Now, when the government created the, ad, uh, the, the adverb, adjective, and pronoun, these three parts of speech, they always get the operations of modification correct to create nothing. They don't use prepositional phrases or position lodial facts. They don't make any declaration or, uh, or rather, they don't make a claim about what is and are are. They, because they, they're misusing all the words that they're going to put up here. And if you go to a dictionary, you won't find most of these words in a dictionary. You can't find a verb flag in a dictionary. You only find it as a fact. It'll say noun in a dictionary. But then a noun, it'll, it'll have noun is spelled N-O-U-N, which is no-no. And the reason this is a no-no is because here it's used as an adverb verb. So they tell you it's a no-no in the dictionary, and you think that a noun is a fact, it's a no-no. <laughs> and they're advertising that effect. If they were going to use a fact, they'd say a fact, but they don't use facts. In all the entire dictionary, in 1828, Webster, when he wrote the first dictionary, he said, the bastardization of the English language is the worst crime I could commit against mankind. I have to make a living, which means he was paid by the government to bastardize the dictionary. Webster was an attorney. Yes. Uh, two in the dictionary, if you looked it up, would be a preposition, right? Two has 20, uh, 38 definitions, and they're in the book. I have one complete page dedicated to the word two. It is the most bastardized word in the entire English language because, one, it's in the future, and you can use it for, I can use two in all conditions of language. Mm -hmm. It's only used once as a noun. It's only used... Uh, if you use it a pre as a preposition, I'm going to the farm. Mm -hmm. Two is a preposition, but now it's in future time, which means you don't have now time jurisdiction. For the knowledge of the person is with the traveling, uh, with the traveling to the at the location of the farm. See, that way. Oh. Mm -hmm. You've got to change your words around. It's a longer sentence. Mm. I'll get it soon. And you say you're going to the store from the house. Two is in future, from is in past, and you got two ideas in one sentence. Weren't you always taught that a nice sentence is one idea? Well, see, it, it's, it seems really uh, easy for you to fall into that trap because the reason for thinking is to abolish thinking. Why would you write a 13-word letter, a 13-word sentence, or a resignation letter with 60 words when it, the only thing is I quit? That's the end of the, right? I is an ad, a pronoun, or rather I is an adverb making quit a verb. But quit is a condition of a state, not a verb. If you're saying I quit, and, but you want to explain it quantum, it would take 60 words to get through it. So the reason for thinking is to abolish the 60 words and, and jump over and take a shortcut. Shortcut. But as you've been told your whole life, the shortcut is always going to get you in trouble. You've got to do things the long way. You can't take short, well, just like when you all did long division in high school. We wanted to go ahead and take shortcuts and not show our work. And most of the time, we got the wrong answer when we took a shortcut. Or the teacher says, if you don't show your work, you haven't proven that you understand long division and how to go through all the mon monotonous steps of, of getting to the correct answer. And that's why it was mandatory that you learn these little lessons, because the shortcut is not the easiest way in life. You have to do things the long way so you're thorough. Question. Um, the use of the originally flag, where does that stand in regards to that being a fiction if you were using the originally flag as your flag? The, well, this was written in future time. The Queen wrote this. Mm -hmm. and, and this was her act that she, she passed on to, to your country here to acknowledge. But did you see any acknowledgement here? How do you spell acknowledge? A-C-K, no contract, which means you have no knowledge. Does this, is this a knowledgeable statement? 
So if I say, well, I'm going to acknowledge this statement. I just said I have no knowledge of the statement because the statement doesn't say anything. So you believe that acknowledge means to pay attention and have a response. Where in fact, I just said to you, I don't know what this says because it doesn't say anything. And I just proved it doesn't say anything and I use the word that says it doesn't say anything. But if you don't know the rules about a vowel and two consonant, you go through your entire life and you use negative conditions of state and always get there. Just like uh, the world court, it's called the international court, right? In means no, T-E-R is terra, nation is people, all is contract. So there's no earth people contract. And every lawsuit filed since 1945 at the world court was written in adverb verb except the three quantum ones that I sent in. There was a seven year wait to have your case heard at the world court. I get mine done in about 48 hours. Because fact has jurisdiction over all the illusions. And the, the other thing is that the, the world court, when we introduced all this technology, gave all the judges claims of, light, of the live life, had them sign oaths, made them postmasters, bankers, and judges in quantum. Russell and I did this. Mm -hmm. When I went to Amsterdam uh, back in, oh, I think it was 04, 2004, I got off the bus and the guards were standing at the guard shack, it's probably about 300 feet away. And as I walked up, they said, Judge Miller. <laughs> I walked up to him and he says, how did you know? He says, oh, we've been studying your material for two years. We knew you when you got off the bus. We know your body language and what you look like. I said, don't you want to see my passport? And he goes, not required. He says, we know who you are. We know what you sound like. He says, all the guys in the, at the court here study your material. All the judges do too and all the clerks. He says, you're, just, you're welcome. You can run anywhere you want here. No restrictions. And I went there with a banker friend. And they said, this guy can't come in. He said, and he was here to check on a lawsuit. He says, well, he's with me. Well, if you're going to vouch for him, then he can come in with you. Otherwise, this guy would have flown over to Amsterdam, spent uh, $3,000 for a round trip here for an hotel accommodations, and would have been standing outside the gate and not allowed to go in. And the same thing is at the Supreme Court of the United States. I go in there, and I, the first time... Uh, I went in, I said, uh, I'd like to see J William Rehnquist, Supreme Court Justice of, of the United States. The guard says, do you have an appointment? I says, no, I'm charging him with treason. <laughs> I says, and I have his signed confession. And they're going, sit down, you're under arrest. <laughs> so I got six guards, they completely surround me. And Rehnquist comes down, he meets me face to face. I tell him I'm a real person. 